Hi everybody, welcome to Food for the Soul. This is Father Warner de Souza. And what I do on this show is to talk about the scriptures and to also share with you a, a very interesting recipe. I thought today I would take, continue my teaching from the Sermon on the Mount and do with you the first of the five hypotheses. But I will also today teach you to make something that everybody loves. If you're a Goan, you love Vindalu. But I thought, let's make this dish a little more versatile, both for the vegetarians and for the non-vegetarians. So I'm going to take the same ingredients, except I'm going to change the meat. And today I'm going to cook the Vindalu with soya granules. This is great for all vegetarians. For non-vegetarians, you can simply use one kilo of pork. So the ingredients I'm using is enough for one kilo of pork. Now, along with this, I'm going to make a very simple salad and I can show you how a good crunchy salad goes with all your food. But just to tell you what are the ingredients for the Vindalu that I use. So I've got about 15 chilies. What you could do is use half of them, half Kashmiri chilies and half Bedgi chilies. Now, what does this do? The Kashmiri chilies really give you the color and the spice comes from the Bedgi chilies. Now, we're in lockdown. I've got just Kashmiri chilies. I'm going to do with what I have. Uh, I got some great Goa vinegar. If you don't have Goa vinegar, you can use anything else. This is really organic. Oh, it smells really, really strong. And then I've got about two onions that I've minced, about 14 cloves of garlic. Now you'll notice that I've got garlic also with the skin on. You see in places like Karnataka, people actually cook with the skin on and that's absolutely fine. Yeah, just give it a good wash and it's fine. I've got about quarter teaspoon of turmeric and here are roughly about 14 cloves in this. I've got seven peppercorns two small sticks of cinnamon, one teaspoon of cumin, and then finally I need some ginger and some chili. I'm not going to grind this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind all of this except the chili and the ginger. So we're going to do that now and while I do that I'm also going to talk a little bit about the scriptures but for now I need to grind this for you. Be back soon. We are back. I ground the masala and I want to tell you what I did with it. I added the vinegar and I added some water. Now this is what you get this absolutely lovely red color. This masala is enough for a kilo of meat but since I'm going to cook soya I'm going to use a little less perhaps I'm going to see how much I really need. Now uh, when you grind this masala, some people grind it only in water, some in vinegar and water, and some uh, only in vinegar. I do a mixture of vinegar and water and then I add vinegar later because goa vinegar, vinegar can really be strong. Now if you don't have goa vinegar, just about any other vinegar would do, but the first time you use it, you'll have to kind of get a hang of it. What did I do also? Uh, I had about 100 grams of soya granules and I soaked it in water and then I drained the water and I'm going to use this to cook. So we're going to start cooking um, earthenware pot, turn on the heat and um, remember today I'm going to do with you Matthew chapter 5 verses uh, 21 to 24. Matthew 5 is part of the five discourses of uh, St. Matthew in the gospel. Matthew's gospel as I told you is a teaching gospel. Luke's gospel is a feeling gospel, a very compassionate Jesus. Uh, Mark's gospel uh, is a healing gospel. Now, Matthew has five discourses and we are in the first one, the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, 6 and 7. I told you the other day that first Jesus gives us our identity. He says we are his disciples in Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And then he gives us behavior. He tells us how to behave in the Beatitudes. And then he gives us prescription, tells us we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. I did all of this and I even told you how Jesus says, I have not come to destroy the law, I've come to fulfill it and I explained what that fulfillment is. Jesus then goes on to give six hypotheses. Now what's really going on? Why does he say 
this is what you have heard but I say to you and the reason is because for 400 years before Jesus came there were no prophets in this period of time the scribes and the Pharisees were the teachers and they had begun to misrepresent the law so this was their interpretation that's why Jesus says it is not written he says it is heard you have heard it said to you and I say to you and the first of these six hypotheses where Jesus is correcting our teachings is in Matthew chapter 5 verse 21. Now I'm going to add some oil while I teach you. So there goes the oil. And what I want to do, and remember with onions, um, this is about two onions, finely minced. I want to saute this. I want it to become translucent. Now some people always think, oh, should you have your onions all browned? It depends upon the color of the dish. If you're doing a strong uh, red meat dish, then you would want um, your, your onions to look brown because it adds to the caramelization, the color uh, to the dish. I just want this to become translucent because remember this dish has its own color. It's a lovely uh, red color. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to add the onions inside. And I'm going to allow this to saute a bit. And then I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. And this is the teaching of Jesus, um, which relates to, to, to the sixth commandment. Now, just give me a minute. I'm going to pick up my Bible. And here we go. I'm going to drop that a wee bit so I can teach and cook at the same time. So here we are. Uh, this, as I said, relates to the sixth commandment. You have heard that it was said to you of ancient times, you shall not murder, but whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, you must, you, that if you are angry with your brother or sister, you'll be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you'll be liable to the council. And if you say you fool, you'll be liable to hellfire. So when you are offering your gift to the altar and you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go and first be reconciled to your brother. Very interesting. Uh, if your brother has something against you, not even if you have something against your brother. So what is re really Jesus uh, teaching us? I'm just going to stir this a bit so that we can do both at the same time. What is Jesus really teaching us? When you look, this is not an analysis of murder. Murder is wrong. Jesus doesn't say, I'm going to condone it. Remember, Jesus is always asking for more in the Gospel of Matthew. As I said the other day, it's ye dil mange mo. He wants more from us. So Jesus wants us to take really a deeper look at what is the emotional prelude to murder? What's going on before murder? And the key word is anger. You see, most of us will say, you know, Father, I get angry, but hey, I don't know what to do about it. And we've got to do something about it. Because if we don't do something about it, Anger can just about lead us to murder. So this word raka, which is an Aramaic word, really it means empty-headed, which translated as you fool. What is Jesus really saying? He says it's not only about killing someone, it's about regarding everyone's life as useful. I don't know whether you've ever been told this, but I've heard people tell me that they were told they're good for nothing. And that's the worst thing anybody can say because everybody is good for some, something. So Jesus is saying, what's really going on behind the murder? Let's look at that. Let's analyze that. Now, for a Pharisee at the time of Jesus, if no blood was spilt, it was not murder. And what is Jesus saying? He says, no, we have to go beyond it. So Jesus gives us the interpretation. Very interesting. He tells us, he says, it was said to you, but I say to you, you were taught this, the sixth commandment, but I say to you, you cannot even insult your brother. Now Jesus says you have the interpretation. Let's now go and see what should be our subsequent behavior once we realize we've made a mistake. And Jesus says to us today, leave your gift. He says, if your brother has something against you, how, how interesting. He doesn't say if you have something. It means that even if you know that your brother has done something wrong, You've not done anything wrong. Leave your gift. What is Jesus really saying? He's saying ethics is greater than cult. Sometimes we give so much 
of importance, rightfully so perhaps, to only worship. But Jesus says, what's behind the worship also? Your ethics, your behavior is also as important, if not greater than cult. And this was the teaching even in the Old Testament, where no true worship of God could be conducted unless there was justice. What is Jesus therefore saying now to us? He says, let's look at the condition of the heart. Because the condition of your heart is far more important than the gift that you give. Yeah, it's like whenever we give somebody a gift, what are we really giving them? What's really going on in our heart when we give them a gift? Are we giving them a gift because we think, oh, I'm going to get something back? Or are we giving them something that we don't really want? What's the condition of your heart? And Jesus says, with your brother too, what's the condition of your heart? I'm not going to carry on and uh, show you where we are. So I've got my onions nice and translucent as you can see right now. So it's really nice and translucent and you've got a bit of oil floating. Now if you are cooking this with meat, I recommend you go really easy with uh, the meat because with the oil because the oil can really be a problem. Yeah, it can just then start floating. Now here is my masala and I am going to measure it out. I'm going one, two, because the last time I used four. So, okay, I'm going to go with four again. Four and I've got a little left. Now, supposing you feel that your masala is not good enough, is not strong enough, no problem. Just take a little pan, heat up some oil, cook up your masala really nicely and then you can add it even to your finished dish. Now, one thing about Vindalu is it's got vinegar inside. And the best thing for this dish really is for you to let it rest. Don't eat it as soon as you start cooking it. And interestingly, the longer you leave it, um, I think the better it gets. You can leave this really long in your fridge. So what I'm going to do is now, just for your sake, I'm going to just pick this up so you don't know. There you go. So I've got my onions now cooking in this masala. And I just want to cook out the rawness of this. So I'm going to turn up the heat a bit. I'm, I want to cook out the rawness. Very often you eat food and you get this spice that is not really cooked and you can pick it up, yeah? So, so I have a blender right now, which is really on the bend. <laughs> it's coming to the end. So I'm not really getting that fineness of, of uh, a ground masala. You can really grind this fine and, um, you know, just the whole flavor of the gravy uh, is fantastic. The whole, t the texture of the gravy is so fantastic. Now, I reserve some of this water. So when I washed the blender, I kept some of this water. I always call this liquid gold. So don't chuck things out because you need it again. And I don't want this masala to burn, right? Now, there are two ways, as I keep saying, you can bring down the temperature. Either put some water inside. I'm also going to add some salt. I always add salt at this point of time because salt brings down the temperature of food. So I'm just going to put some salt now and I will adjust it. Remember this dish is already nice and sour and the sour and the saltiness and the spice and the magic just happens. So here you go. I'm going to add a little bit of water and uh, this is now going to become like a little bit of a volcano. It just keeps bubbling. Don't be afraid. Many people are afraid of cooking and they say, I might burn my food. Yes, you might. That's fine. Uh, you'll make a couple of mistakes the first time, but you'll keep gaining confidence. So don't let anybody run you down because many people expect you to be a master chef on day one. Okay, that's not going to happen. And if you're doing that, you're just a dreamer. So what I'd suggest is go with your food. Go with simple, easy dishes. This really is an easy dish to cook. Now, supposing you were cooking this with meat, and this is what you'd want to know. What I do is I cut it into large chunks, the meat, and then I would put it in a pressure cooker with a little salt. And uh, remember, you need to add water. And what I would do generally is to cook it on one whistle for one kilo for about just one whistle. Then I turn down the temperature and I continue to cook it for 20 minutes. Now, don't cut your pieces too small because it just start breaking up. And this gets nice, uh, uh, you know, the, the, when, when it's done in the pressure cooker, it's like 90% done. That's what you really want. 
because you want to put it back into your masala and this is what I would have done at this point of time added the pork you want to put it into it and you want it to continue to cook for another 15 minutes now I'm doing this vegetarian version and therefore I really don't need I'll, I'm going to let it cook but the soya is going to cook instantly but I'm going to let it stew in because I want the flavors to marry uh, soya doesn't absorb flavors very very quickly and I want this to marry so even once I'm done with this dish what I am going to do is I'm going to not eat it right away I'm going to eat it um, later so that the flavors marry so here, here's where I go as you can see I'm just going to chuck that all inside yeah so all your fancy cooking shows will, will avoid using fingers just wash your hands before you do anything and you're really fine yeah so here you go and you're going to see now how lovely this looks now here's what you can also do you can do a half and half you can do half soya and you can do a half mince any mince that you like and it goes great with the vindalo it's a great way also to fool the kids because uh, that way you cut down the amount of meat that they're eating but in any case this is uh, also protein now i'm going to add a First, I want to just show you this so that you get this idea of this lovely red color. There you go. See? And it almost looks like, uh, like meat. You can't really tell. Now, I want this to cook for a while. I'm going to let this cook for roughly about uh, 10 minutes because I want these, these flavors to marry. Um, remember, as I said, soya is difficult. If you're cooking mince, with this no problem you can cook it again for about 10 minutes if you're doing meat remember you already pressure cooked the, the, the meat so you need another 15 or 20 minutes or 25 minutes on slow fire and that's exactly what I'm going to do now while this is cooking I am going to very quickly uh, move all this aside and I'm going to show you how you can make a very very simple salad uh, a very nice green salad with beans in it so what I did was I soaked these um, these beans yesterday you can use a combination of beans there you go and then I pressure cooked it about four whistles so I'm going to use because I want something really nice and fresh uh, say about one two three this was I think about uh, 50 grams about four of I've got a, a capsicum here. I'm going to drop that in. So what you want to do is make your salads interesting. Yeah, because most people just don't like salads. And then you've got also some tomato. And finally, I've got some onions. OK, this is about say one, two. I think two is going to be just fine. I don't want it to have too much. Now you can add green chili. I'm going to just use some of this. Tabasco inside you want it a wee bit spicy and I'm going to put a bit of salt inside now remember when you pressure cook the beans um, you add a little bit of salt so not too much there you can also add pepper powder just crush fresh pepper powder and then you just give this all a good mix and if you want, you can put in some um, olive oil. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take some lime and I'm going to squeeze the lime on it. And this gives it that lovely chutpata taste. Now, uh, having said that, you can even um, put some amchur, mango powder. What I've been doing these days is taking raw mango from the trees around and uh, I've been cutting them and drying them and they dry in two days, literally. And then you store this. So as you can see, you've got this um, very nice, it, it's very, it's very light and I would also add coriander really to this. Um, but here's what I, I'm going to do. I'm just going to spoon this and so presentation is, is very key. I'm just going to add a wee bit of coriander to this. Here you go. So it adds to the color. And remember that whenever you present something well, people really want to eat it. So I've got this little martini glass 
and as you can see I'm just dropping it all in there and I would have put maybe some pomegranate seeds or anything interesting so here you go and this is my salad which I'm gonna have along with uh, the soya mints let's see where we are on this one okay I had dropped the temperature and now what I would really want to show you is the color and look at this lovely absolutely fantastic red color I'm going to let this cook and uh, in another 10 minutes it is going to be done really speaking I'm done with my dish and I'm done with telling you about the scriptures I hope uh, what I do with you nourishes both your stomach as well as your soul please write in please subscribe to this channel you will also find the recipe on my blog called potipadre.com. Tell me how your dish turned out, whether it was with pork. Tell me some of the techniques that you use or the ingredients that you use. And this way we can share with each other food for the soul. Have a blessed day.